Good evening and welcome to tonight's edition of Fact Sheets live on ETV Live on Nisim 95.9 and 100.1. Also live on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Our handle is ETV Ghana. You can follow the conversation there. And whilst you're following the conversation, we encourage you to share the link to groups and platforms that you belong to. Be they on WhatsApp, on Inter Instagram, on Telegram or any other platform you may be on. would very much appreciate. Tonight... We are talking about the Ghana Police Service. For the first time, we have seen the IGP who seldom talks, who seldom speaks, speaking loud, clear, and bold. What is he talking about? He's raising concerns about concerns that people are raising about the status of affairs when it comes to the security of our nation and the handling of cases that are with the Ghana Police Service. What are these two issues that Mr. Dampare had to write a lengthy response on? I'll share that with you. So just a few weeks ago, the British High Commissioner put something on her status, and I'll share that with you. On her status, she wrote, Oliver Baker Vomawo, Convener of Fix the Country Movement, arrested again. I understand for a motoring offense on his way to court. I'll be interested to see where this goes. And this post was made on the 22nd of May this year. Just yesterday, the Ghana Bar Association also issued a statement, and this was the interesting headline. They said, Ghana Association's statement on the rampant armed robbery and other violent crimes in the country. I'll attempt to read some paragraphs of their concern and share them with you before I read some few bits of the IGP's response as well. The Ghana Bar Association has noted with grave concern the upsurge in armed robbery and other violent crimes in the country. The most recent of these violent attacks occurred on Saturday, 28th of May 2022, when the occupants of a Hyundai Accent sal Salon car with registration number GN989017 were attacked between Bandang Kwanta and Noiri, which resulted in the untimely death of Richard Badombi, who is a lawyer and a member of the Ghana Bar Association. The Ghana Bar Association would wish to commiserate with the families and colleagues of Richard Badombi and the families of all persons who have lost their lives uh, as a result of armed robberies and other violent crimes. The Ghana Bar Association, with particular reference to the incident of Saturday, the 28th of May 2022, involving one departed colleague, Richard Badombi, humbly and respectfully implores the relevant security agencies to carry out swift and thorough investigations of the incident in order to identify the perpetrators of the, of the heinous crime and make them face the full rigors of the law. This concern and the description of have searched in armed robberies in the country, the Ghana police did not like. The IGP did not like. This comment by Madame Harriet Thompson, who is the British High Commissioner to Ghana, the IGP didn't like. And so we ask simple questions tonight live on fact sheet. The response, which I'll be sharing just a few paragraphs with you, uh, was it really necessary for the IGP himself to have responded seeing that there's a communications directorate of the Ghana Police Service. Now I write, I read some of the concerns raised. The IGP today says, Dear Madam High Commissioner, Police Administration's response to your tweet on Tuesday 17th May 2022. The, uh, the attention of the Ghana Police Service has been drawn to your tweet, which reads, Oliver Baker Vomawo, convener of the Fix the Country movement, arrested again, I understand, for a motoring offence on his way to court. I'll be interested to see where this goes. Ordinarily, the Ghana Police Service would not have responded to comments such as yours, obviously made from either a biased or uninformed position. However, we have learned from your previous painful experience that it has not been helpful to ignore such misguided, unwarranted, and biased comments 
intended to tarnish the reputation of the Ghana Police Service and that of our country. What is more, we consider your tweet a violation of the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations 1961, which enjoins diplomatic missions not to interfere with internal affairs of their host countries. He goes on to ask several questions as to why uh, the British High Commissioner had to make that statement in the first place. And so tonight, we want to understand two or three basic things because social media is bringing with those who are for and those who are against the fact that the IGP had to write this. Did he necessarily have to write a response to the British High Commissioner? Two, is there really uh, insecurity in the country? Is there an upset in cases of armed robbery in the country? Again, questions that the IGP put were they necessary? Will this in any way affect diplomatic relations between Ghana and the Brits? That is our focus tonight on fact sheet as I am joined by security experts who have appreciation and understanding of these matters to help us get a better understanding of the issues. I'm joined evening by Mr. Richard Kumado, who is a security analyst and a fraud expert as well, and Mr. Adib Sani, also a security analyst. And you are joining me tonight via Zoom. Gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the discussion. Thank you. All right, so I'll start with you, Mr. Kumado. The basic question is, was it necessary was it for the IGP to respond in the first place? No, definitely. Uh, I would have loved, it wasn't the IGP who signed the letter, but to the extent that the IGP signs it, which means he has read the letter and he so endorses it, so responsibility lies with him. The mm -hmm. letter is a bit too confrontational. Uh, the wording is insulting, and the arguments made in the letter is a bit more aggressive. And I'm thinking mm -hmm. that if the IGP feels the commissioner has said certain things, that they are not placed with. We are talking about a diplomatic call serving in Ghana. The IGP could have speak to the foreign affairs minister and they would have dealt with it at those diplomatic sessions and meetings. And he would have continued mm. fighting crime for which he has been paid. Now, I think by the stand of the IGP, they are making Vomawa a bit more serious and that could distract him considering the heat he's facing from Ghana Bar Association, from the general public asking him to look for criminals who are killing people in this country. And the pressure of the work is getting to the IGP. And I seriously wish he wasn't the one who signed the letter. Indeed, I'll pick your initial comments on this question as well. Should he necessarily have responded to the British High Commissioner? Um, first of all, I find it rather um, surprising that a letter that is meant to be restricted uh, it's, it's been published by the Ghana Police Service. It makes nonsense of the word restriction. I thought mm. nobody is supposed to see it, but those supposed to. And the fact that they have published it makes me wonder why they did so. If I were an advisor to the IGP, uh, I, I would have asked him to not write such a letter because he seems to be putting him on himself a burden that is not meant for him. For crying out loud, the police has a mandate to fulfill under the Police Service Act. It is not the police service that incarcerates. It's the competent court of jurisdiction. The police only arrest and give evidence in court, and the court finds the person guilty, and it's the prisons which holds the person. So I don't know why the IGP wrote that when the statement by um, Ambassador Harriet Thompson didn't really say much. It was generic, and it almost looks like the room is smelling. Someone has farted. Then, then uh, 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 Samit gets up to say, I did it fart. Meanwhile, nobody accused you of farting in the first place. So I think mm. it's, it's a bit of an overreaction. And the fact that the IGP would pen it himself, is not the Attorney General, is not the Foreign Affairs Ministry, uh, is what I find really interesting. Besides the word uh, interference is another thing to look out for. Um, mm. Interference can mean anything. Interference can be an external force sponsoring a, a political force within the country to overthrow another. But interference doesn't mean diplomatic missions don't have 
opinions to what is going on in the country. As a matter of fact, we always go back to them when we have issues. Mm. After the uh, Ayoasu West War on crisis, uh, former President J., uh, John Mahama brought together the diplomatic community. There was graphical and video presentation to them. When MPP was in opposition, they reached out to the diplomatic community. So what are we talking about? We are so inconsistent. Um, we are so hypocritical when talking about some of these issues. The same mm -hmm. external people would tell us that Ghana is the most peaceful country in Africa, and we are happy. We celebrate it. We use it to do politics. Then they tell us, oh, Ghana is the happiest country in Africa. Then, well, yes, our government is working. But once they say something, that doesn't go our way. Because hate it or love it, and quote me anywhere, there is an attack on press freedoms in Ghana. And I repeat, there is an attack on press freedoms in Ghana. And you think they don't know? <laughs> they know. Mm. Now, Kripon, you oversimplified the comment by the High Commissioner. And, and I'd want to read for purposes of emphasis as to whether it doesn't insinuate any attempt whatsoever by the Ghana Police Service to want to abuse the fundamental rights of Vomawa. Now she writes, and I'm quoting from the letter of the Ghana Police Service. They say that Oliver Baker Vomawa, convener of Fix the Country Movement, arrested again, I understand for a motoring offense on his way to court. I'll be interested to see where this goes, dot, 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 in court. Is it not insinuating some mischief on the part of the Ghana Police Service? Well, well, uh, it could mean anything. I mean, um, it was a general statement, okay? Mm -hmm. And um, it almost looks like the, the police has been waiting for the high commissioner to say something, or they have something to hide. Um, you know, sometimes <laughs> the best way to go about things is not to even talk about it in the first place, because you give it prominence and you make people, you know, hammer on uh, about it. But I think it, it, it was harmless of the face value, and we could have just let go. The IGP has a mandate to fulfill, uh, according to the Police Service Act. He's doing his job, okay? Mm -hmm. But the fact that he's come out to issue such a thesis of a response is what I find uh, quite surprising. Mm. Now, let's come to some questions the IGP poses to the high commissioner and i would read some of them to the benefit for the benefit of our viewers who may not have chanced on this statement from the uh ghana police service and he says do you think we the ghanaian people who also deserve a peaceful country maybe reflecting on these questions will help you appreciate our position on such matters and one he says are there instances in your country where people are permitted to openly threaten the security of the state with a coup in instances where individuals are threatening the security of a state does your criminal justice system celebrate such persons and urge them on to destabilize the country as a foreign service officer even though you might not have personal experience your doubt you doubtless have access to the records of the periods of unrest and coups in Ghana. Are you really wishing this on us, a return to these days? And it goes on and on and on and on. These questions, again, I ask, Mr. Kumado, should the IGP oppose them? No, definitely no. I think that is too upfront, that is too arrogant, and that is too confrontational. And the tone mm. of the letter, considering the 11 questions or 50 questions he asked, most of them look a bit more political. And he's taking on a political role when his job is a law enforcement officer. And his job is predominantly is to fight crime. Remember, mm. he was brought in when his predecessor has difficulties in crime prevention. And that is why he was brought in. When he came in, his leadership position and some of the things he did, applaud, everybody applauded him and we commended him. I think this one is the end of the meter. And just like, and you know, something that has started a few weeks ago where some people are trying to put sun into his garage, the pressure of work is getting to him. And if he veered off, 
in today's political diplomatic arena, which he has no business being there, it could create fundamental problems for him. That is what I'm afraid for the IGP. Now, you are experienced when it comes to these things, the security setup and how they operate. I would assume that before the issuance of this letter, it would have gone through the legal department of the Ghana Police Service. And obviously, they would have authenticated and given the go ahead for the IGP to issue this. Did the legal department of the Ghana Police Service, if it went through them, help matters? Now, I'm not a man in charge of legal and intelligence. He's a very brilliant man. I introduced mm. him to Adib Sani not quite long when we met at a occasion. He's somebody I know since 2010, and he's a very diligent and decent man. Mm. This letter is raising so many questions. And these are people I know and I adore them, and I mention their names everywhere. I think whoever wrote the letter and whoever made the ICT sign is indicting the police service and it's indicting many of the big boys in the police service. And I think this is the first time in many years that you see an IGP with a, such a harsh tone addressing a letter to a diplomatic mission. And I think it's not serving them properly. The, the NDC has weighed into the matter. That is another area I'm not too happy with, that they are threatening mm. invited the IGP to the floor of the house instead of the Ministry of Interior. Then you can see they are dragging the IGP into the political arena which will not serve its purpose. And that could raise issues, fundamental issues of illegitimacy and lack of capacity and proficiency in dealing with issues of crime prevention rather than taking on a political role. And I think they will need to reconsider because I wish him well and I wish he has not done this in the first place. Adib, let me ask this. Uh, Mr. Kumado mentioned the interior minister. What would you expect he does with this matter now brewing seeing the reactions coming from the citizenry well, well i would expect the interior minister to um uh perhaps engage the mission behind the scenes i wouldn't want another public banter um i'm sure that the the british high commission i mean i have contacts i work very closely with the diplomatic community um perhaps they would they would they would they would speak again they would they would issue a rejoinder but whether mm -hmm. it's going to be public or not is what we are unable to tell but i saw a video of um the ambassador talk about the fact that she would um, deal with it at the very um personal level and i think that that's the right way to go because we we wouldn't want it to escalate to the extent that it might cause a bit of a diplomatic spot between uh the two countries it is normal for uh countries to um have differ on on issues with with their colonial masters to the french it's a daily ritual um in ghana we might not be so used to it so, so i think this should uh, be seen as just a normal disagreement and um, not escalate into something different um it depends on the leadership also on the part of um the the igp because usually before you issue statements it goes through a lot of processes it, it goes through the legal uh, it goes through your your public affairs directorate and, and all that so what we are unable to see whether is whether the igp personally paints this and, and without recourse to the structure decided to dispatch it to um the the the, the british high commission but that notwithstanding i think that his close people people very close to him advising him to should have if they had you know if they knew uh, should have advised him to refrain from doing so now the structures of the ghana police service as you just mentioned there's the public affairs directorate there's the legal department as well does this in any way suggest some breakdown in terms of a flow of the governance structure of the Ghana Police Service, if indeed the IGP had to pen and sign? Well, um, it depends. and but, but for now, I wouldn't call it a breakdown. I mean, every leader and the way he does things 
Uh, we have some leaders who resort to the structures. I mean, I've worked in the civil service for about 12 years. I've worked under many bosses. There are some bosses who would, you know, ignore all of you, do things on his own, and when it backfires, then we sit in our offices and laugh at him, okay? But there are some mm -hmm. bosses who would resort to the process. Um, some would invite almost everybody around to come look at what he intends doing. Do you think it's the right thing to do? So it depends. Um, but I don't think things are so bad that it is tantamount to um, perhaps denigrating the whole structure in place. I, I strongly doubt that. Now, let's go to the substantive matter, which if you read the tweet of the British High Commissioner, it seeks to suggest that there is a a deliberate effort to clamp down on this gentleman, Oliver Vomawar. And that's how come just a, a, a simple issue like a, a traffic offense would land him uh, in the manner in which we saw uh, some few weeks ago. That'd be true. Is this question for me or Mr. Fumado? Any, any of you can take this question. Uh, Mr. Akumodo, please. <laughs> no, I think, uh, I think, uh, uh, I think, you see, I'm struggling to speak about it. I think <laughs> the, the IGP or the police are making Mr. Vomawa a bit more. The British, you say, you are making him too important. And there must be a reason why they are making him too important. Link that one with the comments we have heard from leaders who are dealing with this issue of terrorism. They mm -hmm. are trying to paint a picture. They are trying to create a figure. They are trying to create a design, a profile, where Mr. Vomawa comes in there. And they are trying to see him as a external agent that is being sponsored against the state. And to that extent, the threat on his life is very high. And the way we address his issues are very high. There's no prudence, there's no circumspection, high handedness. That is why you can understand the woman saying that Vomaha has been arrested again on traffic offense. Mm. And she wants to see how it will end. My brother, I did use the word hypocritical, and I want to say dishonesty. Mm. In the letter the IGP said, signed, and the questions he asked, there was a particular line, Adib, I don't know whether you paid attention to it. You said, do you know how many MPs, how many chief executives, how many arrested, people yeah. have been arrested? I, I have been trained to interpret human emotions and to interpret speeches and all that. What that particular line is trying to say is that they are pitching Vomawa to be a threat to the state. And if you are saying how many MPs and how many chief executives, then in all that breath, you are asking the woman, why is it only interested in Vomawa? But then again, you also, you are taking the issue of Vomaha too seriously. When we live in Ghana and we see how people flout traffic rules, even police officers on operations who are supposed to abide by the rules, break the rules in front of police people. In one of the shootings in Ayawaso West Wagon and many of these places, it was the police people who were begging other officers not to take actions against people when they have the power to arrest. The point I'm making is that the tone of the letter and making Mr. Bomawa a very strategic threat against the state is painting the police service black and is making the case for the IGP very bad, which also presupposes that you might be right, but you are doing the right things wrongly and you wouldn't get the result. And that is why this whole thing would have been better managed. It wouldn't have come into the public when the police stated that it's a restricted document. What is a restricted document doing on their portal? And now it's a social media element and everybody is talking about it. I strongly disagree with the approach, just like I disagree with the approach of the terrorism group, which is lumping everybody. Tomorrow it might be Adib Sani, another time it might be Richard Kumado, because 
So, I mean, one of the things you have not heard, and we haven't told you, we have not said it to you in private. There was a time not long ago, they said the likes of Adib Sani, Richard Kumado, and some other people want to destroy national security. And you could have imagined our threat levels and how they have rated us so important. Meanwhile, we are nobody in this country. We are just minding our business. Mm -hmm. If people have difficulty discharging their responsibilities, the best thing for you to do is to resign. Number two is to seek external help. And number three is to be conscious and work through the process. But this whole thing about making Burma a very strategic threat, even if the threat exists, the approach, the methodology, the language, the posture and everything, I think is becoming too aggressive. And if people do not have the sense of what we are talking about, we are feeding them gradually and they will get to the point where they will say, okay, if they have done this to Bomaha, then let us join the free. And that is where the very thing you are afraid of might be happening to you. That is my opinion on this particular matter, John. We'll take a short breather. When we come back, we will try and go through the issues that the Ghana Bar Association also raised. Uh, is there insecurity in the country? The armed robbery concerns, the surge in armed robberies, are there legitimate concerns indeed? We'll tackle that in a bit. We'll be right back. And you're welcome back to Fact Sheet Live on ETV Live on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Our handle is ETV Ghana. Uh, following us there, your comments are very much welcome. And we encourage you to share the link, the feed to groups and platforms that you may be on. It's live on Nisim 95.9 and 100.1. We are talking about reactions from Ghanaians on the letter, the response that the IGP himself signed in response to the British High Commissioner as to a tweet she had made some few weeks ago on the arrest of uh, Vomawo Baka when she was arrested for some motor offence and her concern about following up on that matter. But that's not the only thing that is bothering the Ghana Police Service. The Ghana Bar Association is raising concerns. They say that there's been a search, an upward one, uh, in terms of armed robbery and criminal activities in the country, and that the Ghana police must do any and everything possible to protect Ghanaians. So one would ask, the security presence we see at the various uh, you know, traffic lights, at the various intersections, is that not deterrent enough uh, for the Ghana Bar Association to have seen, not to have raised this matter? Well. My panelists would help me appreciate these things better. Adi, I'll come to you. Are the concerns of the Ghana Bar Association legitimate? Of course they are. Um, to, to lose a colleague is definitely heartbreaking. Um, a young, promising lawyer um, to be killed in such a dastardly fashion is m definitely a, a cause for worry. For not just lawyers in Ghana, but every single Ghanaian. Um, mm -hmm. We don't know why he was killed, but one thing is certain this definitely wasn't a random act of violence. It was well thought through, it was planned, and it was well executed. But as a criminologist, it can be anything. It can be a business deal done, gone bad. It can be a former client, someone he's prosecuted. It can be a family issue. Okay, and I think that it will depend on the police uh, to do a thorough investigation so we get to know the, the truth. But I am, um, I find it rather curious that the Ghana Bar Association is also finally uh, finding out that there's an upsurge in crime after one of their own is killed. Not, I'm, I don't seek, I mean, let me, let me say this, I don't seek to rationalize or condone any act of violence against any lawyer in the country. But I find it also hypocritical that the Ghana Bar Association would now see the need to issue a statement on crimes in the country, um, which by the way is not as they represent. There is no upset of crime in the country. It is not mm. backed by any data, it's not backed by any statistics. And I welcome the police response to it, even though they could have handled it also um, better. But the truth of the matter is 
there is no upset of crime. If it were last year or two years ago, when the viciousness, the viciousness of crime was on the ascendancy and the um, um, frequency was also up, uh, where William Vance were attacked in broad daylight, attacks mm -hmm. went beyond private citizens like yourself and myself, but even security officers were attacked, where attacks took place in, in the middle of the day at central business districts, like we witnessed in Alaba, in Kumasi, and directly opposite at the Forex Bureau, opposite the police headquarters. We saw the killings of you know, uh, officers. We saw attacks on almost everything, including ambulances. All this while, the Ghana Bar Association didn't know there was an upsurge. And from nowhere, they are coming out with this statement. I mean, on one aspect, um, I agree with them, the police has to do more. But on another aspect, I think they got it completely wrong. Mr. Kumado, are these things that there is no upsurge in terms of crime in the country, armed robberies in the country? And so uh, the statement really has no data to support that. Do you share that view? No, if you remember recently, one of my brothers, uh, Nanayao Akwada, the chief executive of the Public Safety Bureau, came up mm. with the first quarter report, which reconciled many of the data the Ghana Police Service have. And I remember that Adib commented on it. I also did run some commentary on it, as people who look at security from the other side. The police did not have problem with us speaking about it. But the police will not take it from the Ghana Bar Association. And I largely agree with many of the things my brother Adib said. The reason is this. Beginning, as Adib said in the past, that uh, it was the justice system that deals with prosecutions and all that. How many of you know, criminal cases have the police not sent to the court? And for lack of understanding of a judge or a lawyer, the case went bad. It is the mm. attorney general that must be prosecuted. And the police can only do it on behalf of the attorney general. So the police fell in dike that the Ghana Bar Association is placing the booty on the head of somebody and without their consent. And that is why they are reacting. And I can understand the reactive nature, but then they wouldn't take that from the Ghana Bar Association. If you ask if there are issues of crime, yes. If you ask if there are some unresolved murder cases, yes. In Kraza gets bypassed, decide. Uh, what we witnessed in a draft. But the police are doing everything within their capacity to live to expectation. So to have that pressure coming from the Ghana Bar Association, who are, which has been quiet for all these years, the police felt they are indicted them. And that is why they reacted in the manner they did. We are creating too much public nuisance in the public space. We should resign and go back to our various houses and get back to the field and get a job done. If Ghana Bar Association will want to be commenting on cases of murder and all these things, then there has to be some level of consistency. Then the police can take them seriously. Other than that, out of the blue, they want to paint the police black. And the way Dan Paris is signing letters, left, right, center, they want to take them by storm. Now, okay, so now, talk so about to add, to the add frequency of uh, issues based upon it. which, uh, being security aspects, you may conclude that, well, there really isn't that upset. How about cases, very, very high profile cases that you would expect by now the Ghana Police Service would have been able to come to some conclusion, and yet we hear nothing about that? Is that not? basis enough for anybody to also raise concerns that look regardless of the calm that we seemingly see and to the resolution of these high profile cases people cannot feel safe yeah, i agree with you no i agree with you before i did come in until you mm. are able to resolve the cases your efficiency cannot be completed and mm. i'm worried the police have not been able to resolve many of the murder cases and this particular one has added to the list and that is why the Ghana Bar Association will come in. But we are just saying that from law enforcement point of view, for which I have been warned, we wouldn't take it from Ghana Bar Association. And that is why the police is coming up in the manner they are doing. That does not dispute the fact that there are high level murder cases that we are not able to resolve in this country. And it's a worry to everybody that public safety cannot be guaranteed and national security sovereignty 
cannot be, you know, protected. And we can take it from Eshon, we can take it from Adib, we can take it from Richard Kumado. But for Ghana Bar Association, knowing who they are and for their long silence, we wouldn't take that from them. It's a simple matter as it is. Adib, so yeah. I throw the same question to you. Okay, so on an annual basis in the past decade, between 500 and 600 Ghanaians are killed every year. Mm. Um, and these are just those murder cases reported to the police. A lot more might not be reported. Um, yeah, with a colleague, all of a sudden, there's a stomach upset, he's dead. And as Muslim as some of us are, uh, without delay, you know, we, we go bury the person, no autopsy. There, there are a lot of murders that happen uh, without any um, investigation. So when you look at it, the murder cases, I think, might even be thousand or even beyond. We have quite a number of high profile cases, like my senior colleague, uh, Richard Kumoto mm -hmm. stated, Panic Altry, Ahmed Swali, Madame Josephine Asante of Kapoha, um, a whole host of other cases that, that but thankfully, um, the, the, thanks to the transfor transformational uh, leadership of, of the IGP, we have a cold case unit now um, that, that is making a lot of strides. I've been following their work and um, very soon, I mean, we'll be hearing big things, so to speak, from them arising mm -hmm. from the cold cases that, that is still being looked at. But it also is, raises the issue of investigation. And in criminology, we have what we call rational choice theory. Uh, before you perpetrate a crime, and Mr. Kumado is master at this, before you perpetrate a crime, um, you are able to juxtapose between the risk and the reward. So when I pick this remote control, um, when I look around and see the probability of me getting caught is low, I'll, I'll pick it, I'll steal it. But if, there's, if it is high, there are cameras everywhere and police is up to the task, um, they would get me arrested. I wouldn't do it. Um, unfortunately, most of the investigation procedure is, is manual and um, it makes it very difficult for the officers to be able to break their cases before them. So if we resort to the use of um, automation, digitalization of crime and investigation, I think it would help. Other jurisdictions, they use the biometrics. So for instance, they come into this room, they are able to harvest the fingerprints right in the central database, and it will help them break their cases. They even use DNA that is used to solve cases that were you know, that has been pending since the 1970s and 80s, like the Golden State Killer, who was recently uh, arrested uh, for perpetrating crimes in the late 70s and 80s and now in his 90s. We have the biometric mm -hmm. systems. Before you acquire your passport, don't they take your biometrics? Uh, the Ghana card, SNIT, health insurance, and a whole host of others, even the voters register. So why don't we integrate these the systems? Um, so it will make it easier. But Unfortunately, we don't have the political commitment, and perhaps we see, excuse me to say, by V, it's much more of a priority than investing in security. It's interesting you brought in the point about investigations, because personally, I've had cause to raise concerns about how investigations are done. The inquiries that matter, for instance, we have had different accounts of how the gentleman, you know, died. And, you know, the account that has come from the Ghana Police Service. You remember the case of the Bullion Van Police Officers as well, and how later on we were told that as suspects who were helping the police with their investigation, they were found at the forefront of an exchange which got them killed, and many started raising concerns about how they were found at that place in the first place. Does this bolster confidence in the Ghana Police Service in terms of their ability to resolve these uh, court cases, if we may put them that way. Adib. Okay. <laughs> okay, so um, I think that the police has an opportunity to get things right, mm. but they cannot do it alone. Leadership is key. And it would interest you to note that if we didn't have the IGP this current one in place, we wouldn't have been able to find out that those involved in the bullion vans were police personnel. He's an operations person, and you can't believe how he single-handedly at a point contributed to get into the bottom of what has happened. Um, I hear people talk about, oh, we need police personnel, 
but the quality is most important. A uh, hundred well-trained personnel can do what a thousand untrained personnel cannot do. Okay, mm. we need them to be well trained. We need them to have the necessary logistics, and we need them to be mentally and physically prepared to be able to deliver. You see, when it happens that way, um, it has really positive implications. It builds confidence and trust in the Ghana Police Service. Look, believe it or not, there are crimes that are perpetrated against some people who don't report to the police. You know why? Because they ask mm. to what end? It almost looks like the police is doing you a favor, even listening to you in the first place. And that is problematic. So I think we need to really look at this closely, whether we have we need to have more crime labs, whether we need to get more uh, specialists in forensics, whether they need more logistics, at least. Uh, we are able to get the criminals to understand that uh, we need business. And if you perpetrate the crime, we'll catch you. Now, my final question, because I have just five more minutes, uh, I'll give two minutes of that to Mr. Kumado. A texter just sent me a message. Mr. Kumado, I'll read it to your hearing. Now, he says, Samin, you and your guest must say it as it is. The IGP has been too much emboldened, seeing that in the previous administration of John Dramani Mahama, we had John Benjamin constantly tweeting, commenting on matters about the administration and yet we didn't hear the previous igp write to john benjamin dampai was still in the force and we didn't hear him write mr Kumodo, your response to my uh viewer who has texted this no he has every right to question it that is why you could see that both adiv and myself we have agreed that if you think you have problem with a diplomat send it through the diplomatic channel and let them deal with it at that level so that you preoccupied yourself with law enforcement predominantly investigating cases and bringing out the results but rather than coming into the fall you are shooting yourself in the field and you are going into a zone where the complexities in that particular area could create problem for us we need them parry at the post and we don't want any agitations and political witch hand to say, let them parry go. It will take them a long time to recruit another police officer. Then we wage a war against that person again and let that person go. If Dan Parry is going, let it be gradual. But we should not set him up against the diplomatic call and let him sign letters he has no business signing when he's supposed to be investigating in Grand South, Ameswali, uh, Madame Josephine and you know many of these unresolved investigative cases when you have problem with investigations and they are unresolved it creates bad behavior and it rationalizes antisocial behavior and from criminal point of view that is what the IGP is fighting to achieve and we should allow him to do that i think i'll give you the final okay. bite <laughs> and then you go under one okay. minute for me do all right so a quick one the okay. British letting this slide I, I was about to say something, so I didn't hear you. I, I was asking whether you see the British letting the response from the IGP with all the descriptions you have given it, letting it slide. No, I think they, they have to respond. However, it has to be done in a much more decorous manner. Um, they have to do it at a um, very uh, governmental level, and uh, not the public you know, display that, that we have seen. Um, but let me be quick to add before we end this program that mm. the diplomatic community is an important stakeholder in the way we do things in the country. The diplomatic community funds us in many different aspects. Even the police, they fund them. Oh, so that is not their house business, right? So mm -hmm. they, they have a stake. We, we cannot run away from it. And it's important we recognize that and do things so there's cordiality. The IGP says, do fear some and that's to the diplomatic community where as to whether the politicians would agree with him that's another matter we may discuss another day but for tonight i would like to thank mr deep sani and mr richard kumado for being my guests via zoom and for us to have this very insightful conversation live on etv my name is samuel Shen. on behalf of the production team i say have a pleasant